Hi, my name is Gary Patterson and welcome once again to this Lenten journey, Longing for Home. Remember to keep connected via Facebook for the coming week and explore the Book of Reflections with some of the authors who wrote those meditations. Maybe share a meal with some friends on Friday, maybe take a moment or two for pondering for quiet prayer. So, today's reading begins with Greeks arriving with questions, saying, We want to see Jesus. I wonder if maybe they're the ancient equivalent of the spiritual but not religious, searching for meaning with a hunger in their souls. Truth be told, I sometimes feel myself like those Greeks, full of questions, wanting to see Jesus, to know him. Interesting to watch how Jesus responds, suggesting that in order to see him, we might just have to follow him, to become engaged, open to an experience, ready to risk. Are we willing to do that? Sometimes I feel more like a rich young ruler who wants to follow, but who has so much personal stuff, so much tradition, so many church worries that I miss the chance of a real encounter. And then, spin the question a bit. Note how these Greek seekers first came to Philip and Andrew, asking the disciples to help them see Jesus. So, what if some 21st century seekers were to come to you and ask the same thing. We want to see Jesus, to discover what he's all about. Who is he? Oh, and by the way, can you help us figure out what Jesus has to do with church? How would you respond? What would you say or do? Well, Jesus throws out yet another clue about what it might mean to see him by offering a quick aphorism. I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. This is beginning to feel like a familiar theme, this need to lose your life in order to find it, that in order to flourish, to grow, to be fruitful, we will need to experience loss, suffering, even a death of sorts. It's true for us as individuals, and it's also true for us as a church. I wonder what it would be like for us as a denomination or a congregation to fall into the earth and die, to give up everything we have and simply follow this Jesus, to let go of the financial reserves, the buildings, the traditions. What happens then? Do we just disappear or do we find a new life, new ways of being faithful disciples? Frances Dorff suggests in her poem, Lightening the Load, that The first thing we have to do is notice how we've loaded down this camel with so much baggage we'll never get through the desert alive. Something has to go. It's easy to say, eh? And a lot harder to do. In fact, says the poet, we may end up having to surrender even the camel. But she also points out that walking through the desert on bare feet may be the only way to see a burning bush. It's that paradox at the very heart of the Christian faith, crucifixion and resurrection, dying in order to find new life. We get a chance to see Jesus himself wrestling with this truth. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Me, I would be tempted to say, you bet. That's a prayer I often share with God. I'm not keen on the suffering part. I'm often short of courage, and I think that's probably true for many of us. Now, the Jesus that John portrays doesn't struggle for long. He asks the question, sure, but quickly responds with no problem. When I want to get a better glimpse of the humanity of Jesus, of his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, I find myself turning to the other Gospels where he actually does pray for this cup to pass. In fact, according to Luke, he prays so passionately and fervently that he sweats blood. That feels a lot more familiar. And yet, Look at the strange reassurance that Jesus does receive in John's Gospel. He experiences a heavenly voice, true, but others only hear a roll of thunder. At the very least, it's an ambiguous sign suggesting that Jesus himself had to go forward in faith. The probabilities of his death were high. The likelihood of new life, of bearing much fruit, well, that remained to be seen. There were no guarantees. Nevertheless, Jesus chose to hear the thunder as good news. Maybe that's always the way it happens. The only sign that God offers is one where interpretation depends on faith. 
where we have to trust that God is present in all things working for good, that even in the moments of suffering, there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God. When we have that kind of faith, well, maybe that's when we see Jesus.